go ahead and get started. Thank you so much okay. for being here today and sharing information with us. Hopefully this is helpful to all of us um, in our business, our real estate business. So Nancy, you are on. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks again, everybody, for being here. Um, I'm Nancy Spiro and my colleague, Grace Lynn. We are your preferred lenders with Movement Mortgage. And we are loving these, these um, monthly calls with you guys, being able to bring you some products, some specifications, and just hope to uh, extend your knowledge so you have more tools in your tool belt. Um, so today we're going to be talking about some first-time homebuyer programs and down payment assistance. Um, I think the stat was that 62%, I think Shannon said, might have mentioned this, of home buyers next year are going to be first time home buyers. So it's definitely a market that um, we want to explore and we want to be able to um, help these people achieve home ownership. So we're going to dive in, cover a couple programs, cover some down payment options. And then um, I don't want to talk the whole time. I want to leave it open and we'll do some Q&A after if it has to pertain to first time home buyers. Um, or anything, and we'll try and um, answer your questions. So let's dive in. Um, first, what kind of questions do we hear? And I'm sure you guys hear these as well, right? Oh, I can't buy a house. I need 20% down. Um, that's not true. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how that works. Um, you're gonna see. You know, can my parents co-sign for me, or can they just give me money? Yeah, absolutely. Parents can co-sign. But there's different, you know, income limits for certain products and things like that. So we need to strategize what's the best way to, to maybe utilize help from family members. And can they give you money? Of course, we want them to give you money if they can give you money, because that's a gift. Um, and we can we can uh, work that into the, the um, purchases as well. Um, I always hear this, like, I've got horrible credit. Well, what's horrible credit? I don't think we really know um, until you explore. And we have options if your clients maybe had a credit hiccup where we can look at, we have what if scenarios like, hey, what if you pay this card down and we wait two months, maybe you're going to get, be able to get to a different program. So don't ever let a credit issue or what they think might be a credit issue, hold them up. Um, you know, the cash under the mattress. Well, we can <laughs> talk about that. Um, there's different ways to make sure that money is sourced in season. So getting it into a bank account um, or any accounts that will be used for the purchases, we need to make sure we have uh, 60 days of those accounts with the money in there. Um, I owned a home three years ago with my ex. I can't be a first time home buyer. False. You are a first time home buyer. If you haven't owned a home in three years, you would qualify for all of these first time home buyer programs. Um, and then this one comes up from time to time, but I have this roommate and he pays me rent and he's been paying me rent for two years and I wanna buy a house. Can I use that income? Yes, possibly, we can explore it. So definitely again, um, you know, questions, I'm sure you've he heard other bizarre ones, but we're here to answer those. Um, and just benefits, we all know there's benefits to home ownership, but just encouraging our people that might be sitting on the fence um, right now, you know, some, some reasons why you would want to be a first time home buyer, your monthly payments are more stable. You don't have somebody raising the rent on you. You don't have somebody, you know, charging you extra fees for utilities. You can plan for the future. You can save money and you can know your budget. And when you own a home, you're building your net worth and your total assets, the total net worth for renters around $10,000. The total net worth of a homeowner is around $200,000. So if you think of your, um, you know, your family members, generational, you know, buying a home is going to add to that. Um, you have the freedom when you own your home to do what you want. You can paint that door whatever color. You can paint the living room. You could, you know, put a trapeze in the living room if you you want. I've seen it on appraisals, believe it or not, but you have that freedom to do whatever. And you get a sense of community and stability um, as well as building equity. Every month when you make your payment, people say, well, you know, I can pay rent. It's fine. It's the same amount. But when you're making your mortgage payment, you're actually paying into your home savings account. That's called equity. And so that equity could be there for you at a later time for investing, college, life events, you know, who knows what could come up. And so also I can't give tax advice because I'm not a tax um, person, but you, I know as a homeowner that you get tax breaks when you own a home. So definitely benefits. So I'm going to go through 
pretty quickly and just touch on about six of the different programs that first time home buyers can um, utilize. Um, and then we'll compare and contrast some of them to help you guys maybe think, oh, well, which bucket would be best for my client to fit into? Um, so conventional 3% down, this is the absolute minimum you can do on a primary home purchase. Um, this is best, the conventional loans are for your, you know, higher um, income and better credit borrowers. Um, you again need 3% down and if was a high balance loan, which those rates, uh, the high balance limits have now gone up to 750,000. At least that's what we're allowing. Um, the minimum payment's only 5% down. It's conventional guidelines, right? So you're going to have to make sure you have that lower debt to income ratio, the higher credit, perhaps some assets. Um, and so want to just explore what that looks like for our people. And then you will need to take a home ownership um, counseling course. You can do those online or in person. Um, and you must, at least one of the borrowers need to be a first time home buyer. So if one isn't, but one is, that's okay. So that's the conventional program. And a lot of you probably hear about home ready and home possible. So these are programs that are um, allowing 3% down and it's an affordable product. So these are here for our first time home buyers. Um, and it's for, but you don't have to be a first time home buyer to use either one of these, just a little side note there. Um, but these are for home buyers, maybe with you know low to moderate household income. There are medium income limits that need to be adhered to for these products, and those are different upon county. So that's something we can help you find out about. Um, home Ready is a little more lenient with credit. You can go down to a 620 score, um, and this is the one that allows you to use border income or that rental income. Now the rates with Home Ready and Home Possible are typically a little bit lower. Um, there's no what they call LLPAs, so these are loan level pricing adjustments. So they wanted to make it easier for first time home buyers to be able to avoid to afford um, these these purchases with lower down payments versus the conventional loan. Um, and you'll also get discounted mortgage insurance. So mortgage insurance rates usually depend on the amount of money put down and your credit score and your debt to income ratio. And so this, the um, insurance rates on these are a little bit less than what would be with just the regular conventional loan. You will need to attend a uh, HUD approved home ownership education class. And again, I, I just think these classes are great for first time home buyers. It gives them all the nuts and bolts. It covers every facet. You as agents educate them, us as lenders educate them. But this really covers it, you know, from head to tail on what you need to know about being a homeowner. So that's Home Ready, which is associated with Fannie Mae. And then there is Home Possible. And this is the same type of program that is backed by Freddie Mac. Um, pretty much all the same um, caveats with it, except they want a little bit higher of a credit score. So they like a 660 credit score. Um, and so, again, got to have that home ownership class taken. Um, and what do we have next? FHA. I think a big myth is you have a lot of borrowers that are like, well, I'm a first time home buyer, so I need to do FHA. Well, FHA doesn't stand for first time home buyer. It's the Federal Housing Authority. Um, we covered this last month a bit, but um, you don't necessarily need to be a first time home buyer. Um, mm -hmm. FHA allows for three and a half percent down. So again, that minimal amount down, 100 percent of it can be gifted. Gifts can be utilized with all of these programs. Um, FHA, we covered last month too, can allow up to 6% of the loan amount and seller credits. Um, right now, that could be beneficial and that could be obtained. We're seeing seller credits out there and that can help cover your closing costs, that can help cover maybe buying down your rate to help affordability, um, but just another um, point with FHA. And FHA is a little more lenient with credit, it allows a little bit lower credit scores, a little bit higher debt to income ratios. And so we have some more flexibility for maybe those borrowers that don't have perfect credit. Um, and FHA does not require you attend a home ownership um, class. And then there's other first time home buyer loans, right? So VA, um, which these are a little bit, they'd be their own, probably their own um, class we could do, but VA, you have to be a veteran. <laughs> or active duty um, or a spouse um, too. Um, you need to have a certificate of eligibility, which we can um, help you locate. And then these provide zero down. So 
We believe our, veteran, our veterans should be able to afford home ownership. Um, they've served our country and we want to serve them. So zero down for VA loans, no mortgage insurance, and Movement Mortgage does waive all of our lender fees for our VA borrowers. So um, we're striving to be the number one VA lender in America, um, which is a big feat, but we want to be there. And we have a lot of veterans here in our area. So this is a great program. Um, you don't have to be a first time home buyer to do a VA loan, but you can only have one VA loan at a time because you need to use that entitlement. So um, USDA, this is for some of our areas like Yelm, Richland, you know, maybe in some of those, again, rural areas. Um, I always hate saying that word. <laughs> like I can't say it right. <laughs> um, but you need to be a first time home buyer and you get to finance 100% of the purchase. So um, definitely some programs, those are a little bit outside of the box, um, but worth exploring. And if you have some clients that are looking in those areas that you might think qualify for USDA, we can look them up. There's lookup tools and we can also provide that um, for you. So we will scooch on. What about my down payment? Your borrower is going to come to you. Well, I, I have this savings. Awesome. That's the first thing. You've got your own cash. Great. So you're going to have the ability to put that minimum down or more um, and, you know, utilize what you've saved up. Super. That's great. Or my parents or grandparents want to gift me the money. Fantastic. We can use gifts from family members. Um, even with FHA, it could be a close family friend if we can document that. Um, and those gifts are documented we need to obviously see where the, the source comes from. And then we provide a gift letter, making sure that the gift is not a loan or anything that the borrower needs to needs to repay. So um, gifts are allowable. Um, state bonds. So some of you might have um, used this program before. The Washington State Housing and Finance Commission provides down payment assistance. They want to help people who have never achieved home ownership achieve home ownership by providing down payment assistance. And so I'm going to dive into that a little bit more. And we said, hey, we're movement. We want to be a movement of change. We want to provide down payment assistance. So we have our movement boost program. Those differ a little bit in repayments um, and just how they're structured. And so um, I'll go into those. And remember, put your questions in the chat or save your questions and um, we'll move on. So the Washington State Housing and Finance Commission has many different down payment options. Some of them are very, um, they're, they're specialty, such as home choice, which is for only buyers with a disability or if they have a disabled family member living with them. Um, they also have down payment options for veterans. Um, again, you don't have to have a down payment, but perhaps that could be helpful um, in qualifying. Um, one that we really use a lot is our Home Advantage DPA. Um, that provides three, four, or 5% in down payment assistance funds to help with your purchase. And that needs to be used in conjunction with the commission's first liens, which are either conventional or FHA. And I'll be honest with you, their conventional first liens are pretty pricey. Their rates are up there. The more down payment assistance you get, the higher the rate goes, right? Because they want you to have some skin in the game or they want to make sure you can afford the payments. So I'm going to do a comparison in a little bit, just showing you their FHA program versus our movement boost program and the down payment assistance that are provided with that. And again, this is just high level. There's so many details to each of these. If you have questions, just reach out to us and let us know. Okay. Um, and then our movement boost program. So this provides up to 5% down payment for a primary home purchase. You don't have to be a first time home buyer and it's used in conjunction with an FHA loan. We don't offer a conventional first loan option with this. Um, the second is a little bit different where it's immediately repayable where the Washington State um, Housing and Finance Commission bond loans, you do not have to pay them back until you actually sell or refinance your house. Um, Boost, again, is a little bit more flexible, 620 minimum credit score, and we can go up to 50% of our debt to income ratio. And two unit properties are allowable. And we're gonna give you a little fun um, 
new thing that's coming out on multi-unit properties at the end of this. I'll let Grace tell you. She's got a fun thing to share with that. But for now, let's go ahead and look at, Nancy, what have you talked about? Well, here's a summary. Let's look at, we've got the conventional. I thought it'd be helpful to see a scenario. You got a client, let's say the house is $500,000. We've got a conventional loan. We got your 97%, your 3% down. We've got an FHA loan with 3.5% down. And we've got home ready with 3.5% down. So you'll see right here, down payment, 3%, $15,000. And then that's what they'd be financing. Interest rates change on a daily basis. And I put these slides together a few days ago. So this isn't today's rate, but I just wanted to have examples for you. Um, we will see the principal and interest is 35.37. Escrows, I used the same across the board for taxes and insurance. So we can compare apples and apples. But you see with that conventional 97%, the mortgage insurance is a bit higher than our other ones as we look across the board. So that would be your total payment with only 3% down on a 500 thousand dollar purchase and then we move over to fha so you got to put a slight bit more down another twenty five hundred dollars you're financing more because you have upfront mortgage insurance uh premium financed in so you've got a lower rate but you're financing a little bit more but look at that your payment's still roughly 15 or 20 dollars less even though you're financing more same amount for escrows but your mortgage insurance is lower so again, being able to compare each of these different scenarios for your client and see, do they have that three and a half percent down? Can they get a gift for that? Would that be better? It's going to save them about a hundred bucks a month if we could do it that way. So just something to explore. And who knows if they got some seller paid closing costs, they could buy that rate down even further. But then we'll look at our home ready. No, they only have 3% down. So let's look at home ready or home possible. Again, the interest rate is going to be a little bit lower than that conventional. Um, your financing, you'll see that same amount, 485, and you have your escrows right there. But the home ready mortgage insurance, because it's a benefit to the first time home buyer, is a little bit lower. So you'll see your total payment there. Same, same purchase price all the way across the board is roughly 150 bucks cheaper. That could make or break the difference in your in your borrower qualifying. So this is what we're here for, is to help um, look at these and compare them for your clients. So we will move on to down payment assistance. So you've got your client, hey, I don't have any money. Nancy, you're breaking up on us. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we lost the last five seconds there. Nope. Am I here? I'm... I hear you now. Yeah. Or maybe it was just me, but you definitely froze for me for about five, six seconds there. I think everybody. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not. No <laughs> um, uh, well, let's see. Did you get this part? Where are we? I think just restart this slide. The, we got that part. Yeah. Okay. okay. So here's two scenarios with the Talking down payment system. Muted. <laughs> um, your borrower comes to you. I don't have any money. Okay. I want to buy a house. Great. Let's see what we can do. Now you're going to have to have the discussion with them. They're going to need some funds, right? For their earnest money and their closing costs. Um, and we can, you know, obviously talk about that. But for the down payment, the big chunk, right? So how do we help them? So here's the Home Vantage DPA program. And this one is providing 4% of down payment assistance to go towards their purchase. This is an FHA loan. So the second that they're getting from their down payment, it's going to give them roughly $19,600 and some dollars. Their down payment's only $17,500. So they have a little bit left to put towards their closing costs. Um, you'll see the Home Vantage down payment when I looked at it, their rate was a bit higher. Again, they're giving you the funds, so they are going to have a little bit higher of an interest rate. So you can look at here, the principal and interest, escrows, mortgage insurance, again, um, is $4,281. Now, as I mentioned, the second lien from the down payment doesn't require a payment. It's a zero interest loan that is a second mortgage behind your first. And you do not have to pay that off until you sell your home or refinance. Now you need to know it's there, right? That's an extra $20,000 that when you go to sell, you're gonna to have to pay that off. 
So it's not like it's free money, but it's delayed until you need to pay it back. So just, you know, know that because everybody's like, oh, it's a free gift. Well, it's not. We want to be really clear about that. Um, but it's helping you get that foot into the door of home ownership. And then with our Movement Boost program, um, as I mentioned, this can give you up to 5%. So with the same down payment that you would need, you can pay your down payment and you can have an additional, you know, $7,000 to use towards your closing costs, um, really getting you in there with almost no money of your own down. However, we do require with this program, the payment to start immediately. So um, our FHA movement boost first mortgages are lower than market. So you'll see seven and a half percent. So your principal and interest is going to be lower there. Escrow is the same, mortgages and CERN is the same. And you can see your total payment is much less on that first. Um, you do have a second payment, right, on that second. And the interest rate on that is always going to be 2% more than the first. Um, so that's a payment of $318. So, yeah, your payment's a little bit higher with the movement boost, but you come in with your down payment covered, almost your closing costs covered, and you're immediately paying that second back which is only a 10 year loan. So you're building your equity, making those payments um, if you qualify for that. So I know that is a lot of information. <laughs> so um, I just wanna make myself and Grace make ourselves available um, for questions. Let me know if you want me to revisit any screens or what have you got? If you have any questions, I think we're okay to go ahead and just unmute yourself. Hey, this is Riley Ayers. Yeah, just uh, that last one, uh, that last slide, you had the first option, uh, down payment assistance, and talked about you wouldn't have to pay it until refi or selling the home. Uh, it said simple interest, mm -hmm. but you're talking about no payments. Can you explain that again? It's just, if yeah, there's no there's no interest on it. That's a zero payment loan. It just sits there and it's a for it's a second lien behind your first. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Yep. Is there anything fun in the chat, Grace? Yeah, what's the income limit for the down payment assistance program? So I know the home advantage uh, max income limit for King and Snohomish County is 146,500 and all other counties are 114,600. Mm -hmm. And they do, they will change those. I don't know how often, um, but we can always look it up. Yeah they, look up. yeah, they just made that change in May and it's still on. Like I just checked their website too. Um, I think movement boost, I don't think we do have um income limit. I think we follow the hundred, is it hundred twenty percent of area median income, Nancy? Yep, yep. So we're it can we're go fine up there. to yeah, all the way up to about hundred sixty four thousand seven sixty for King County Stone Mission Piers. Any other questions? It also doesn't have to be about first time home buyer down payment. We're here to just answer your questions. Yeah. Nobody has questions at all. I, I'm good right now. Yeah, okay. All right, was this helpful for you all? Just curious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Definitely was. I do have a question about like the income limit for those kind of down payment assistance program. Mm -hmm. The income limits vary depending upon the down payment assistance program from what I'm hearing. Do you have like a monthly income range, maybe? Uh, generally speaking, I would say, I think the home advantage across the board is, what is it, 146? Okay. And 
146, 500 for the King and Snohomish County. Other counties are 114, 600. Okay. And actually, home advantage, yeah, go ahead. for home advantage, it's actually 180,000 statewide in Washington. For, um, I don't know if there's a different I program. Lewis. Um, and I know that's just from the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. Um, okay. I've got it as 180,000. But there are some like the house key. Or what was the other one that we saw there was like a home ready and house key that do have different varying um, income limits. But um, the home advantage, which I my understanding is kind of like the big, the I think, well, I know that the loan that I had used the most with a lot of my clients, it's the it's 180,000 income limit. Thank you. The yeah, home possible and home ready have the the median area income that Grace was talking about, but home advantage, yeah. Okay, so one that I was sharing is a home advantage needed base. And yes, Candace, you're right. For the first lien, like for the normal home advantage, it's 180. And that's for all counties in Washington? Is mm -hmm. that state mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Hey, so Grace, do you want to some other like overlays that depending upon the specific program then? Yeah, there, yeah. Because mm -hmm. like, again, down payment assistant is not just one that Washington offers this. Like there's like, you know, Nancy just talked about home key, you know, I mean, house key. Everything, there's, there's some grant programs too. And they only offer that when state of Washington does have fun, like the reserve to offer that. So like, mm -hmm. you know, those things are there, but home events itself, though, like within that program, there's like different layers to it. Right, right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we actually have to have the borrower scenario in order for us to see what kind of program that we can fit them into. But yes, you're right. 180 for statewide or normal home advantage. But if it's needed based, then, you know, there's like lower income limit. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think for me as an agent, I, I want to know enough. <laughs> that I can kind of like direct, but not too much to be dangerous where we go down a rabbit hole. And it's kind of like, you know, when we speak of down payment assistance, a lot of times the response is like, oh, well, you know, I'm too concerned about down payment assistance. What does that mean that I have to make so, you know, this minimal amount? And so I've just found that it's so much easier to just guide my clients to the pros, which would be Nancy and Grace or Grace and Nancy, I think I always think of the TV show, <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> guide them to them and let them, you know, kind of like look and really discover what's the best option for them. But, you know, kind of in general, um, I think that 180,000 with a, um, you know, credit score being around 640, 620, is it 620 or higher or 640? or higher, um, <clears throat> or just kind of the basics that I like to know and like to share. And yeah. And hey, Grace, <clears throat> do you want to share that exciting news of what's coming out about buying a two to four unit property? Oh, <laughs> yes, November 18th, um, Fanny actually agreed that for the two to four units, currently we do require at least 15 to 25% depending on the number of units for the down payment. But now if you're buying it as a primary, meaning that you will be living in one of the units, then we can consider that as a primary and then you can do 5% down for a minimum down payment. And also before they would not let us count the rental income if you're a first time home buyer buying them as a primary, but now we will actually let you use the future rental income from the other unit as part of your qualifying income. Literally, that's going to be a big game changer for a lot of younger generation who's first time home buyers interested in like, you know, building their, you know, that worth of like, you know, real estate investment. So mm -hmm. we will do a lot more, I'm sure, marketing when the time comes closer, but it's coming for November 18th. 
it's really something that could be beneficial to first time home buyers where they can move in, have somebody paying half their mortgage and start building that equity with as little as 5% down. So just since we're covering first time home buyers, just something to consider. Maybe your buyers haven't thought about that, right? Like I've never been a landlord. Well, let's, let's look at what that looks like for you. So. I think it'd be a, a great stepping stone too for first time home buyers, which I think back when I bought my house, that wasn't an opportunity because I didn't have 20,000 or 20,000, 20% down to do that. Um, let alone, you know, just thinking of those opportunities. So I encourage all of you go through your database, think of your sphere of influence and the people um, that are in your contacts that would benefit for this, or maybe some of the home uh, first time home buyers that over the recent years that, you know, weren't able to um, get into homes based on, you know, uh, ridiculous amounts over asking and now versus kind of to the challenge of, um, the interest rates. Um, this is a great way to leverage um, and know that this is a great um, opportunity to get your foot in the door as a first time home buyer. <clears throat> yes, it is nationwide. Mm -hmm. I would just want to also encourage if you have any clients that um, said they were turned down or didn't qualify. Um, we'd love the opportunity just to see what we could do. Maybe it's just some credit repair we need to look at. You know, maybe things um, have changed with what programs are, are offered or maybe their employment changed. So again, you know, being able to reach out to your database and maybe think about that, um, we would love to help. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. So this may um, be silly. Um, I've never done anything kind of like, um, like two units and up basically one of my customers they're not qualified for that much because of um they own a business and they're they didn't really report all their income from their business so they weren't really um they're basically they're only um uh, approved for 380 and so that with the um, if they get a two two units and up can they use the um or i'm sorry i forgot my question um <laughs> can can they um how does that work as far as um using the rental as like is like 25 percent right to get more um loan loan amounts so, so like if they're approved, yeah sorry it, no i'm sorry it's 75 percent. so if you've never been a landlord before or like you know we don't have documents to prove that you were receiving any kind of rental income for more than 12 months then mm -hmm. we can use up to 75% of your future rental. So let's say if, you know, the other unit's rent will be $1,000, just let's say it's going to be higher, but we can use uh -huh. 50 of that to, you know, offset your um, future mortgage payment. And then mm -hmm. the rest of it, you have to qualify with your own income. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Got it. Thank you. No problem. You would get, you would get that future rental income from... Um, if there's already a renter there or mm -hmm. within the appraisal, the appraiser will do um, a fair market rent evaluation for the unit as well. And so that's what's used um, for underwriting purposes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. And Ken, sure. for your comment, yes, we will actually send out an email with, you know, the basics of each down payment, you know, like minimum credit score, loan limit, you know, or any kind of other things that might hinder the, you know, situation or like if people might have a lot of questions, we'll make that and we'll send that out. Oh, thank you. Any other challenges you guys have experienced over the last couple of weeks with any of your borrowers that we could maybe help overcome? everything's peachy no <laughs> <laughs> or have you guys ever heard of any other like loan programs you know that might sound too good to be true or anything unique like you know anything that you might want to share with us we can see if we can bring something on like that if we don't have it already there 
There was. Um, Sorry. Go ahead. I'll figure out what I'm looking for. <laughs> do um do those units qualify for a down payment assistance as well? For the five percent, um, the the November eighteenth one, the one that's coming up. I'm sure we will have more updates on that, but as far as we know now, we haven't heard anything from the Washington State yet, but we are assuming it should be because, you know, they are following normal Fannie and Freddie guidelines, and this is a primary homes only. Right. So we're hoping okay. to hear back from them, you know, with the same or similar line of, you know, qualifications. So we'll let you know for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Did you find it, Candace, or? It was. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but there was one that was available. I, I want to say that, um, God, I can't remember the specific details, but it was something that was available last year, and it was a great loan. I want to say it was something like a Grow Daisy. Does that oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that even still even available? Some of the, the it it is is what I'm hearing. You know, those actually there's a bank that who's offering that, and yes, that is the name Crow Daisy. Um, before they actually had really good rate for the down payment assistance. Right. So it was very interested. I mean, popular when it came out, but now like they actually pushed up the rate so much that a lot of people get kicked out when the DTI comes in. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay, makes sense. But yes, the program's out there. And again, like Randy said yesterday during, you know, the leadership meeting, we are coming out with a lot of different programs and we want to hear about like, you know, what might help, you know, out there in a the marketplace instead of we just try to come up with something. So if there's anything that you hear, you guys can always email us, let us know. We'll more than, you know, be happy to share that with our leadership, making sure that we come up with something to support you. Right. Again, you know, it has to be a teamwork. Like, you know, we, we only know up to so much, like actually, you know, in a, in regards to, you know, interaction with the client, you know, what their roadblocks and, you know, why they're hindered to, you know, like jump into the market. I know the rate is a one part, but like, you know, if there's any education that needs to be done, I mean, we're more than happy to, you know, look into anything and everything. And I know, I've heard a lot about renovation loans and other lenders are offering that too. We will like, you know, look into that too with, you know, and see if we can have another session just based off on that. Cause I know it's going to be something huge for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I guess but I'm just kind of also curious to everybody that's still here on the call. Is there any like major objections that you're having right now with your buyers? What are the main objections that you're, hearing what do you what is it in reference to buyers or are the buyers just like nowhere to be found <laughs> that's not good <laughs> I mean I did I taught a um I did a class this past weekend um and it was just um it was like high, home buying now or later and my biggest thing was I wanted to um just connect with people and see what are what is the noise that you're hearing and um, assist with that. And um, interesting enough, we had um, four people, I think there was 15, 14 in the class and there was four people that actually made application um, right away. Um, I have yet to hear back from those that, you know, if they're through the pre-approval process, but, um, you know, being able to be in that class and just share a little bit of, you know, my history of purchasing my first home and when interest rates were about the same as they are now, and just sharing um, more or less that if you can actually afford the payment um, and work it into your budget, um, you know, right now is a great time to still pr to purchase and knowing that, you know, later on you can refinance, um, you know, if there's a time where you have extra money, you can put a little bit more down um, on your payment and the principal amount and kind of work it so that that interest rate is, is not necessarily seven or 8%. Um, there was a big, 
um, I looked at a, a Facebook post and there was the question was posed, what's more important, interest rate or payment amount? And that one really got me to thinking, you know, um, sometimes we're just so focused on interest rate, interest rate, interest rate, but without thinking about, you know, the other interest rates. I mean, I went to go buy a car and I'm used to like 0% financing or like 1.99. And they were like, no, ma'am, it's going to be 5.99 for the interest rate on the car. And, you know, knowing that a car is not something that is going to um, be a future vessel for me to have um, generational wealth for my family. So um, just curious if you guys have any major objections that you're having in reference to the buyers um, out there. I think uh, this is Riley, just like what you said, uh, people are hung up on the interest rate, but it's also because it's, it's not affordable for them. It'd be one thing if it if they can make it work, but for I think for a lot of people coming off inflation, um, they just they can't they can't because of the home price combination. Right, right, right. I think well, we explored too. Um, I think I might be having some internet trouble. Um, but looking at the overall situation, right? If they have a certain amount of cash, and not just that payment, but what are you paying out every month? You know, um, if you can pay off that car loan and free up $500 and have your mortgage payment and be building equity, like, what does that look like? And so not being scared. I've heard, I've talked to a couple different agents and their buyers are saying, it's just not a good time to buy. And why? Why? Why yeah. isn't it a good time to buy? You want to, yeah. <laughs> why? I mean, explain to me why you think it isn't a good time to buy because you want rates to be lower well mm -hmm. that same house is going to cost you, you know, x amount more and you're going to have 10 times the when when is a good time to buy let's right. explore that for you right exactly um i think i the uh, payment is too high rent is still cheaper for a home the same size than purchasing it and i think that's you know, that very well may be true. Um, I don't know a lot of cases where it was cheaper to purchase a home, um, you know, over my course of, you know, purchasing and I've purchased six homes um, in the last, I don't know, however long. But um, with that though, I think too, the other thing is renting is 100%. And that is 100% paying your landlord's mortgage for them. Nothing that is building anything for you in the future. So, you know, my my big thing with that is, yes, it's always going to be, you know, cheaper to rent. But I think in the long haul, in the grand scheme of things, even if it does cost you maybe $500 or $1,000 more per month to buy, um, you're building your own wealth, your own equity, as opposed to, you know, paying for maybe one of my properties, you know, um, and, and at some point actually paying my income, you know, and so that's kind of, I kind of try to get to the core of that and helping people to understand and sharing um, to Hyatt, you're a homeowner. So, you know, knowing that you have something, a nest egg for your children um, in the future or even for retirement later on. So. Yeah, and some of the things that, you know, we talk about is like, you know, Candace said that, yes, I mean, you know, rent could be cheaper, but, you know, it's like, you know, you're throwing your money out the window. So when you're looking at the mortgage payment, you have to kind of look at it as a longer term savings. So if you are like setting aside of saving account to, you know, get like, you know, deposit, I mean, save up more down payment, it's actually smarter to use the, you know, minimum or down payment assistance to purchase a home and you're actually putting money back into the home, you know, by building equity because none of the savings, you know, account out there will build you, you know, the wealth that the, you know, home's equity will do in a, you know, same amount of time that it will. So that's one of the thing. And I know a lot of people talk about high interest rate, but one part that they don't really think about is, you know, we all have to file taxes at the end of the year and high mortgage interest rate is a tax deductible, depending on everybody's situation. Yes, it could be a little different, but, you know, government is actually 
helping you pay part of you know that higher mortgage payment because you're paying higher interest rate. So people who have like two, three percent interest rate, they do pay mortgage, you know, interest too, but like they're not getting that much of a deduction compared to people who's actually paying it at seven, eight percent. So if you do some calculation on that with your tax professional, you'll see some of the savings that you actually have by paying a higher, you know, mortgage payment. So that's, you know, like two different kind of things, the education that we, you know, talk to the clients in regards to. So once they see those differences, you know, they get a little more encouraged to like you know, apply and get pre-approved and look for homes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that is a great point. Also just wanted to touch upon, we, you mentioned it really quickly, but just in those scenarios we looked at, right? If you've got a loan amount, you know, uh, you purchased a home um, at $500,000, right? And we're looking right now for, you know, a, a low appreciation rate, maybe say 4%, right? We're not at the 12 or 13%, but that just put $20,000 in equity in your pocket as a homeowner, in addition to what you're paying. So where, where are you going to get that? Like you mentioned, Grace, in a savings account, you're not, you're going to save $20,000, you know, putting that away. Most likely, you know, I don't know, maybe you could, but that's instant, you know, savings and in that asset and in that generational wealth that we've been talking about that continually compounds year over year. So just helping your borrowers if they're talking about, I don't want to buy versus rent one thing you might want to bring up to them with home appreciation values. All right. Well, we won't keep you all. Have a fabulous day. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you, Grace. Appreciate the time spent. Um, and if there is anything, uh, Nate, uh, Nancy's number is in here um, and email address. So if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to me. I will get you their contact number and contact information. Um, but if there's anything, you know, you're having, trying to deal with some objections and want to just have a conversation around it, um, feel free to reach out to any of us. Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate you all. All right. Thanks again. Have a good one. Thank you.